Hoti Anu, Hoti Anu, Mimi Chaim, Hoti Anu, Mimi Chaim, Die Anu, Die Die Anu, Die Die Anu, Die Die Anu, Die Anu, Die Anu, Die Die Anu, Die Die Anu, Die Die Anu, Die Anu, Die Anu. Glad you could join us this evening. We're going to do a Christian Passover with all the meanings explained in it this evening for Passover. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's a benefit to you, and I hope uh, you practice this with your own family and in your own church. I'm Messianic Pastor Guy Gifford, and this is my lovely family, and uh, we'll get started right here. The Greek name Jesus comes from the Hebrew name Yeshua, like Joshua. The Greek title Christ comes from the Hebrew title Messiah, which means anointed one. The word Torah, commonly translated to law, refers to the first five books of the Bible, or the teachings in them. There is a specific order to the Passover Seder that we're going to do tonight, the Haggadah, with four cups of wine being the mile markers. The mile markers can be best understood as the history of creation. First, creation was holy, sinless, sanctified. Second, creation fell into sin. Third, uh, was the redemption from sin by Jesus the Messiah. And fourth, is the creation restored. Again, giving praise to God. But since this holiday is centered around the action of Jesus redeeming, re, Jesus' redeeming death for mankind's sin, it is, the first of the, it is the first of the breaths or acts of Jesus and symbolized in the first lamp of the tabernacle menorah in God's divine yearly theater, his divine play. Upon studying the first Passover, you can notice many things that point to the fact that God set up this as a divine theater of symbolism throughout. Things include God allowing Israel to become slaves in the first place, Pharaoh not allowing them to leave, they being required by God to leave in haste. But first, they must do unique and seemingly unnecessary rituals, including the rules on the sacrifice and the unleavened bread. The Seder is a big annual event for in Hebrew families. Families host other individuals or travel long distances to join their families. The meal is intended to have a long, relaxed, extended duration over other dinners with long remembering what God has done in rededicating ourselves to him before the meal. Traditionally, kids get bored and everyone gets hungry. Feel free to eat the food that's not on the Seder plates, the Seder center plate, uh, as hors d'oeuvres because I always provide extra hors d'oeuvres to keep people busy through the longest part, the beginning half of this. We are gathered this evening to observe and remember Passover, God's deliverance of his chosen servants, Israel, as a type of all mankind. God redeemed Israel and delivered them from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. And because Israel owed God their lives, God commanded all Israel to observe observe this ritual holy day. We who follow Jesus the Messiah of Israel and the world are adopted children into Abraham's spiritual line, grafted into his vine, chose to be servants of God. We are made co-heirs of his promises and made priests of God as the Old Testament prophesied and the New Testament declares. We are not to celebrate in vain, but to give thanks to him and to recognize three Passovers of deliverance. 
When God commanded Israel to annually celebrate Passover, it wasn't a command to celebrate any of the, nine, the other nine plagues, nor the exodus from Egypt, but rather what God told them to celebrate was specifically the Passover. First, the physical redemption by the Lord of Israel from slavery unto death. Second, the spiritual redemption of believers by the Lord from spiritual slavery to sin unto death. And third, creation's redemption by the Lord from the consequences of sin. We anticipate the prophecy fulfilled of the lion laying down with the lamb, the leopard with the goat, and a little child leading them. Through the death of the foretold Messiah Christ, Yeshua, Jesus, we too are passed over from death and released from the bondage of sin. I ask tonight that you consider each of the scriptures and prayers that we will be reading this evening and that you may truly observe and recognize our Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. I also encourage you to seek the Lord on your own. The truth is revealed in the Lord's word, the Bible. Moreover, if you come to God honestly, if you ask him, he promises to reveal himself to you. If you repent, God promises to forgive your sins. And if you ask and keep on asking, God will have a personal relationship with you, which is what he really wants. Celebrate the feast of Passover because it was a on this very day that I brought your diversion out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as the lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Exodus 12 verse 17. I rescued you from slavery until death. Now the Lord said to Moses, An iron in the land of Egypt. This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year to you. Exodus 12 verse 1 to Two. I am the unleavened bread and the Passover sacrifice. Let us pray. Father, glorious God, creator of the universe, we thank you that you have shown us your plan, that we can be a part of it, and we can worship you and praise you with hallelujahs because we are a part of your plan and you love us. Thank you for this Passover feast. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's me. The flame of the lampstand is a symbol of the Lord's presence. Lighting candles during Shabbat or Sabbath and on holidays reminds us that the Lord is our light. On Passover, it reminds us of the flame from the first branch of the tabernacle menorah foretelling and memorializing the death of the Messiah in redemption of both mankind from death as well as Israel from the slavery. We are also reminded of Passover's full moon and the full moon under which Israel hurried their exodus through the desert. It is written in Genesis that the offspring of a woman would crush the serpent's head and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel, Genesis 3.15. It is through a woman that our salvation would come, our hope, our light. It is by the seed of a woman that Yeshua was born. Let us kindle the festival lights. Baruch ata udanai ilohino milikho olam sherkid shanu bimitsuba tab Zidvanul Halik Nirshim, Shabbat Yum Tov. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to candle the festival lights. Amen. Baruch Ata Odenai Ilahi no Mile, Ho Alam Sher Shihi Chiyanub, Kiyimunub. Higiwanu Manhazi. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, 
King of the universe, who has kept us in life and preserved us and has enabled us to reach this season. Amen. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. The Seder plate has many items that we will use to experience the Passover using our senses. We will now begin reading the Haggadah, which means the telling. We are called to celebrate Passover, Jew and Gentile, for Yeshua said, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 17 to 20. As believers in the Messiah Jesus, we are free from the law, but we choose to honor the law as it is God's perfect will for mankind and by keeping the feasts in the law we are with our soul's gratitude memorializing Messiah Jesus's redemptive acts of mankind then the Lord said to Moses now you will see what I will do to peril because of my mighty hand we will let them go because of my mighty hand he he will drive them out of his country. Exodus 6, verse, verse 1. During, I am, oh, sorry. I am the, the Lord, Lord, and I will bring you out from, from under the yoke of the Egyptians. Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. judgment. I will take you as my own people, and, and I will be your God. God. Then, then you will, will know, know that, that I am the Lord your God, who brought, brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. Exodus 6, 6 through 7. During the Passover Seder, we will drink four glasses of wine or fruit from the vine, the cup of sanctification, the cup of plagues, the cup of redemption, and the cup of praise. Notice the cup's progression is the history of the world. First, sin-free, then sin-filled, then sin-redeemed, and sin-forgotten. We will say the traditional Jewish prayer before drinking each cup, and I will point out the ancient Jewish meaning of each cup, as well as the meaning fulfilled by Messiah Jesus. The cup of sanctification for Israel we are to be clean of yeast as a reminder of Israel's hurry out of Egypt when they didn't have the time to allow the yeast to rise, raise the bread. But does the creator of the universe hate yeast? No, of course not. Actually, when you read the Exodus account in the Bible, you should come to realize that Israel had plenty of time for the yeast to rise before the first Passover and additional time in which they made more dough, which they carried in troughs on the journey. From the first Passover, the yeast was clearly intended by God as a symbol of something else. And that something was sin. In the Messiah, sanctified means holy, which means both clean and given entirely to God's purpose. We are to be clean of sin but Jesus Messiah is the only one who was ever perfectly clean of sin. He is the unleavened bread of the promise. 
the meaning for creation is this. God created all of creation and mankind sinless for a Garden of Eden life and perfect relationships, including walking with God. The cup of plagues, the second cup. For Israel, it's a remembrance of the plagues of Egypt. In the Messiah, it's remembrance that each of us has sinned and has broken relationship with God. Although God can work all things for good and bless us, still we are broken humans. The meaning for creation of the, plague, the cup of plagues is since Adam and Eve sinned, all the world is under bondage and the plagues of sin, pestilence, weeds, disease, earthquakes, hurricanes, wars, crime, attacks, death, and, all, and we've all experienced broken relationships. The next cup, the third cup, is the cup of redemption. For Israel, it symbolizes the blood of the Passover lamb or goat who saved the Israelites from both bondage and the death of all their firstborn. The meaning in the Messiah is that this was Yeshua's blood and death who was symbolized in the Passover lamb goat, paid the penalty for mankind's sin, fulfilling the redemption of mankind, but not taking away our choice. This cup to which Jesus referred to it as his blood in the Last Supper dinner at Passover. The meaning for the creation is that Yeshua redeemed the world with his sacrificial death, and he is currently restoring mankind, and he will restore all creation to the Garden of Eden. And finally, the cup of praise. For Israel, it gives thanks to God for the Israelites out of a lifelong slavery. The meaning in the Messiah is that Jesus redeemed us and was resurrected from the dead. Since the days of Jesus walking on earth, the kingdom of heaven is here, now, and spreading like streams of life throughout the earth. So we always have reason to have praise on our lips. The meaning for the creation of the cup of praise is this. Jesus is coming again with trumpets to judge the nations, symbolized in the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah to judge each person as symbolized in the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and to restore all things to the Garden of Eden and dwell with mankind, as symbolized in the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for the sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses dead without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses, how much more severely do you think? A man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who was treated as an holy thing that blood of covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace. Hebrews 10, verse 26 to 29. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Luke 22, verse 14 to 16. Way back in the Garden of Eden, all was sin-free, holy, and we were sanctified. God and his creation were at one. Thorns didn't grow up. There was not death. There was not war, and God walked and talked openly with mankind. We all desire that sanctification state to again enter God's presence without sin and to have peaceful relationships among all mankind. God's established the sacrificial system to cleanse us of our sin. Yeshua is the ultimate prophesied sacrificial atonement 
so we can be in God's presence. May we all be sanctified through the blood of the Lamb, Yeshua. Please fill your cup, the first cup. A full cup is a sign of joy. And on this night, we are filled with joy in remembrance of God's mighty deliverance. Let us lift our cups, the cup of sanctification, a reminder of the Lord's abundant giving of the sinless creation in the, in the Garden of Eden and the unity both God and mankind had. We'll do this first blessing in Hebrew and English for a taste of the Hebrew, but we'll refrain from butchering the Hebrew in the remainder of the Hebrew blessings. Let's go ahead and pour the pour the juice blocks right up to here. I'm gonna need it for I'm gonna need it to wet my whistle while I'm speaking. You guys might be having dry mouths also from speaking. Okay. All together. Baruch Gata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Bore Prehaga Fen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. So I'll drink. Mm. Ah, my bad. We were supposed to lean to the left to symbolize reclining when we drank that, just so that you know. Uh, it's a tradition among the Jews because the Passover feast from after the first, all future ones, were supposed to be done in relaxation. It's an interesting side note. The blessing over bread says, Who brings forth bread from the earth? In contrast to the common belief, even among Messianics, the wine blessing is not talking about grapes growing on a vine. This blessing, actually, a Messianic prophecy. Yeshua's first miracle was creating, creating, that is, creating the fruit of the vine. See John 2. Who's the next reader? Sam. 24 verse 1 to 6 the earth is the lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters who may ascend ascend the, ascend the hell of the lord who may stand in his holy place he who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false he will receive Blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Let us wash our hands. As we wash, let us renew our commitment to God to have clean hands and pure heart. Thank you. And we'll hand them back to you to put on the plate. All together here. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to wash our hands. We're skipping those. We're skipping the rest of the Hebrew ones. Okay. Next reader. That's you. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Exodus two twenty three to twenty five. We will take the parsley called carpus, and we will dip it into the salt water twice, once for each eyeball. 
We do this to symbolize the tears and pain of the Israelites as slaves and our own tears caused by sin. After the following prayer, take parsley and dip it into the salt water. And remember that even though we have painful circumstances in our lives, we will also have the hope of God to free us from our tribulations. Okay, let's take some romaine. Yeah, actually, let's take the that. Yeah, let's just a little bit, like one each. Okay, each of us. We gotta dip it twice, once, twice. Mm hmm. Okay. Next reader. Who is next? So I think it's you, right? It's Michelle. Don't you know the little yes, yes works through the whole batch of dough? Dough? Dough. Get rid of the old yes that you may be a new batch without yes as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival that with the old yes, the yes of malice and weakness, but with bread without yes, the bread of sincerity and truth. First Corinthians 5, verse 6 to 8. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added and carried it on their shoulders in, in kneading trough, rough in clothing. Exodus 12, verse 34. <clears throat> Notice here that they could have leavened the dough with it rising on the journey, but God intended the yeast as a symbol of sin and direction to annual repentance from the very beginning. I will take the matzah pouch, pouch and three slices of matzah and put one matzah in each section in a moment and we will break the middle one. Uh, I could have three matzah. Okay, one, two, three. And I happen to have a fancy top here with multiple sections in it. But you don't need one. Okay. And put it in each section. In a moment, we'll break the middle one. Many different explanations are offered as to why we do this and what it represents. One is that the three matzahs represent the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. However, why would we break the matzah representing Isaac? Abraham offered his son Isaac at, um, at Mount Moriah, the binding of Isaac, but Isaac was not broken. Another explanation offered is that the three matzahs represent God, Israel, and the Jewish people. Again, why break the matzah representing Israel? And that one only. The, the broken piece is called the bread of affliction. Yet another explanation offered is that slaves could not be sure where their next meal was coming from, and so they might have hid some away just in case. The Hebrew scriptures say, Adonai Echad, Asho Mo Echad. The Lord is one and his name is one. However, the word Echad carries with it the concept of some sort of plural aspect, a unity. For example, in Genesis 2 24, we read, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become Echad flesh one flesh. Also, the Hebrew scriptures refer to God as Elohim, a plural form. We can understand the three matzah 
hint at the triune nature of God, a single, indivisible spirit who manifests to us as our Father and as Yeshua the Messiah, the living Torah, the Word of God, the Son of God, and also as Ruach, HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit of God. We can understand the middle matzah is broken to remind us of what Yeshua, the bread of life, endured to be our sacrifice that atoned for our sins. Okay, now I break the middle piece, the bread of affliction. We'll eat one half, and the other half is called afikomen, the dessert. Now I'm going to wrap one up, and we're going to hide it. Right. Um, okay. And for now, let's each have a piece of that comb. Oh, some of that. All right, have some. Have some. Then we still have them. You see, I'm kind of kind of hurrying to eat this. I see the next line here. Right. Okay, all together. In haste, God required us to flee Egypt. Next reader was Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them with when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols as on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Deuteronomy 6, 4-9 In the future, when your son asks you what is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws that Lord our God has commanded you, tell him, we were slaves of Peru in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent miraculous signs and wonders, great and terrible, upon Egypt and Peru and his whole and his whole household but he brought us out from there to bring us in and give us the land that he promised on out to our forefathers the lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the lord our god so that we may so that we might always prosper and be keep alive as is case today and if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God, as he 
has commanded us that will be our righteousness. Deuteronomy 6 verse 20 to 25. And when your children ask you, what does the ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our, our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Exodus 12, verse 26 to 27. This is your part. You read, Michelle. <laughs> Down on the bottom, you read, oh, actually, it's on the next page when it starts. So you're right. It's going to start there. How different this night is from all other nights. On all the other nights, we eat bread or matzah. On this night, why do we eat only matzah? On all other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables. On this night, why do we eat only bitter herbs? On all other nights, we don't not dip our vegetables in even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? On all other nights, we eat our meals sitting or reclining. On this night, why do we eat only reclining? Tonight is different from all other nights because tonight we will remember what God has done for his people. Everyone together? Blessed is the Almighty, Almighty God, God who has, has given, given the, the Torah, Torah to his people. people. The Torah taught the Israelites to answer the questions of children. What is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws of the Lord our God has commanded you? Deuteronomy 6.20 what do you mean by this ritual? Exodus 12, 26. What does this mean? Exodus 13, 14. And they were to answer, It is because of what the Lord did for me when I went free from Egypt. Exodus 13, 8. But notice that the answer does not answer the questions and is also required by future generations who were not slaves in Egypt. Their answer summarized is, because I owe the Lord. Rather than actually saying that this is the meaning of it, why is that? It's because the actual meaning is tied to the Messiah's action in the divine play. We will now tell the story of Passover. The Israelites were already in the land of Egypt. They became fertile and multiplied and increased very greatly, so that the land was filled with them. A new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph and imposed great labor and hardship on the Israelites. But the more Israelites were oppressed, the more they increased and spread out. The king then ordered the all newborn baby boys be killed. The Pharaoh charged all these people, saying, Every boy that is born you shall throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. A Levite woman conceived and bore a son and hid him for three months. After that time, she prepared a wicker basket and laid the child in the basket and placed it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bath in the Nile and saw the basket among the reeds and had her slave girl fetch the basket. The Pharaoh's daughter took pity on the child and made him her own son. She named him Moses, explaining, I drew him out of the water. Moses grew and had learned of his heritage after witnesses an Egyptian being an Israelite, and he struck down the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When Pharaoh learned of the matter, he sought to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh. He arrived in the land of Midian, where he married his wife Zipporah. A long time had gone by, and, and the king of Egypt died. The Israelites were groaning under bandage and cried out to God. God heard their cries. God appeared to Moses in burning bush, telling him that he would use Moses to lead his people out of Egypt into the land, flowing with milk and honey. 
So Moses returned to Egypt, and Moses took the road of God with him. Moses and his father, brother Aaron went to the Pharaoh to ask for the release of their people, but the Pharaoh's heart was hardened against the Israelites and would not release them from bondage of slavery. Each time the Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites go, so the, the land of Egypt, Egypt came under the great flag with the tenth and, ma and most awful plague, the heart of Pharaoh would be fierce. On that, On that same, same night, I will, I will pass through Egypt and, and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. Egypt. I, am I am the Lord. Exodus 12, 12. 12. And the blood on the houses where you are staying shall be assigned for you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, so that no plague will destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Exodus 12, 13. This day shall be to you one of the remembrance. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout the ages. You shall celebrate it as an institution for all time. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the very first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day to the seventh day, the person shall be cut off from Israel. Israel. You shall celebrate a sacred occasion on the first day and a sacred occasion on the seventh day. No work at all shall be done on them, only what every person is to eat, that, that alone may be prepared for you. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for on this very day I brought your ranks out of the land of Egypt. You shall observe this day throughout the ages, ages as, in, as an institution for all time. Exodus 12 verse. 1417. Let us fill our cups a second time. We must also remember the great sacrifice at which redemption was purchased. Lives were sacrificed to bring the Israelites out of the bondage of Egypt. As we recite each plague, let us dip our little finger into the cup, allowing a drop of wine to fall, reducing the fullness of our cup of joy this night. All right, we need to refill our wine, in this case, grape juice. Okay, then taking your finger and the list, we're going to dip it. in here and say the first one as we touch our plate blood then frogs Not. gnats flies, flies. livestock Stop. died wait a minute i gotta change the page oils, oils. hail locusts Darkness. Darkness, death, death of, the, of first the firstborn. Born. All right, where's my finger wiper here? There are only three biblically required components to the Passover. Rabbi Gamaliel, grandson of Rabbi Hillel, and teacher of Rabbi Saul. Paul the Apostle, taught that in recounting the Passover story, one must explain them. The Passover lamb, unleavened bread, and the bitter herbs. Passover, it is God that we honor in remembering that he passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians. The shank bone 
reminds us of the Lamb whose blood marked the doors of the Israelites. We read in Exodus that the sacrifice was to be a one-year-old sheep or goat without defect, brought into the household and cared for like one of the family. It was then at sunset at the their end of the 14th day of the month that the Israelites were to slaughter the sacrifice and not break any of its bones and put the blood on the sides and tops of their door frames. Then roast it and eat the sacrifice hurriedly and dress to quickly escape and burn up the remainder. God gave his people instructions that only through obedience would they be spared from the angel of death. Isaiah told us of the coming Messiah, that he would be led like a lamb to slaughter. We know that Messiah Yeshua was our final blood atonement so that we would be free from the bondage of sin and death would harmlessly pass over us. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and glory and honor and praise. Revelation 5.12 The Israelites were saved by God and not an angel or seraph or any other messenger. For it is written, On that same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. Exodus 12, 12. Oh. I shall pass through the land of Egypt. I, I not, not an, angel. an angel. I shall strike down every firstborn. I, I not, not a, a seraph. seraph. I shall destroy all the Egyptian gods. I, I not, not a messenger. A messenger. All. I, I am, am the, the Lord, Lord. I, I am, am the, the one God, God and, and there, there is none, none besides me. me. Matzah. Lifting the other half of the middle matzah. Hiding back over here again. Somewhere, where'd it go? Oh, my middle matzah went. Oh, got rid of it. Okay. Uh, matzah. That's here. Why do we eat this unleavened bread? Because God told them not to have leaven in their house or food for seven days. I will quote, Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, but on the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats anything leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. Exodus 12, 15. It wasn't the hurry, it was God's law, a symbol in the divine play. Marar, where's the Marar? Ah, there we are, our Marar. Why do we eat bitter herb? Because of the hardship that the Israelites had to bear? No. Although the bitter herb is symbolic of that hardship, its ultimate meaning in God's divine theater is Adam's sin, a plague on all creation. And Israel's slavery is an example of that. They made their lives bitter with hard labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. Exodus 1, 14. The egg has been added to the Seder. It is called Kahahaya, a name signifying the special holiday offering. The egg was added during the Babylonian period. The egg does not have a great significance in the Seder other than reminding us of our Jewish heritage and that many obstacles that have been overcome through the years, but is also called the sacrifice. We are reminded that just as an egg has three parts, the shell, the white, and the yolk, God has revealed to us both the Old and the New Testament that God is triune, the Father, the Messiah, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. And now we bless our second cup of wine, the cup of plagues, the cup of sin. The reminder that relationship was lost due to sin of mankind with God and mankind's sin, sins against mankind, and that all the earth groans under sin. Everyone together? Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe who created the fruit of the vine. Then we lean to the left. Left is this way. And drink our plagues. Everyone, blessed, blessed are you, O Lord, Lord our God, King of the universe, universe who has sanctified us with his, his commands and has commanded us to wash our hands. We will now bless the matzah as food. Everyone together, there's the, hand me a matzah. Just hand me the whole plate. Ah, oh, there we go. All together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Thank you. Set that back. The half piece over here, right? That's okay. That one stays there. All right. The matzah of Passover is not just food, but a fulfillment of a commandment. Let us bless the matzah, all. Blessed, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, God King of the universe, universe who, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us concerning the eating of matzah. And together... Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us concerning the eating of the morrow. And now, we're each going to take some of this. Take a piece. Is that about right? That's probably about right. Hold on to that. We're going to put that bitter stuff on there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, so get yourself some bitter herb on there. <laughs> A little bit chicken of that bitter herb. We have, oh, that's going to that's gonna be harsh. Here we go. Okay, eat your marar. Mm. That'll clear my sinuses. <clears throat> You guys needed more bitter herb. I bet you didn't even play. Okay. Uh, let me put this back. All right. Where are we at? Blessed. Oh, we did that. Michelle now. Ah, Michelle now. Okay, go ahead. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloth back Cloak. to your belt, your sandals or your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in his, it is Lord's Passover. Exodus 12, 11. Oh, they, they are, are to, to eat, eat the lamb together, together with unleavened bread and, and bitter herbs. Numbers, Numbers 9, 11. And... <clears throat> Here you go. We're going to have some more marara on here. I can't reach it, so can you pick it up? Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Where are we at? All right, here we go. Bite on that tongue. That's a bitter herb. Ah. 
We're eating wasabi tonight on our cracker. Uh, it's traditional to have horseradish. Wasabi is actually a type of horseradish from Japan. Leader, let us now eat and remember the grace, mercy, and love that God has for each of us. For he sent Yeshua, our Messiah, to be our Passover lamb. We too, like the Israelites, released from the bondage of slavery, can be saved from the bondage of sin. Now, we're going to have the Cheriset. That's the uh, one there that represents, there you go. Break that in half. And then we want the smaller one. Okay. Somebody pick up the chair set, the, uh, that one. So you go ahead and serve yourself. And this is quite yummy. How great is God's goodness to us, for each of us, for each of his acts of mercy and kindness, we declare, Dayenu, it would have been sufficient. Let's now read Dayenu together. Um, I'll read my part and you read yours. Had he led us out of Egypt, only led us out of Egypt, never punished our tormentors, Die in you. We say that together. Die in you. Had he punished our tormentors, only punished our tormentors, never given us our homeland, die in you. Had he given us our homeland, only given us our homeland, never granted us the Sabbath, die in you. Had he granted us the Sabbath, only granted us the Sabbath, never given us the Torah, die in you. Had he given us the Torah, only given us the Torah, holy Torah, had he given, die in you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for our remembrance of creation and perfection as you made it. Of our ancestor Adam's sin. And the bondage to that sin. Thank you for the food that we're about to eat as we eat our meal and as we enjoy the other half of this Passover celebration. Amen. Amen. We are back from eating our meal and now we have to have the children find the afikoman where it's hidden. So, would you be so kind as to find that for us, without bumping anything? Ah, and now I must pay for it to get it back from you. So, here's money for you. Thank you. You're welcome. And now we have the Afikoman back. Okay. Everyone returns and finishes reading the Haggadah. The Afikoman must be found by the children and return to the leader for a reward. The reward is a symbol of the fact that Yeshua purchased our redemption at the price of his own life. Even a non-Messianic Seder, if the Afikoman is not found, the Seder cannot continue. Save room for dessert, the Afikoman. Uh -huh. We will now eat the afikoman, the dessert. The taste of the afikoman should linger in our mouths. It's about the afikoman that Yeshua broke, gave to his disciples, and said, 
While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, Matthew 26, 26. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, Luke 22:19. 19. The pa Passover cannot be completed without the Afikoman, nor can our redemption be complete without Yeshua. Who is the bread of life, our Messiah. Eat it all. Uh, okay, let's say the blessing here. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, as God wants us to desire to eat all of him and to always hunger and thirst after him altogether. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Now we all eat some apicomen. Have some apicomen. Some apicomen. You can put chairs that on it if you want. Many ask, how does the Messiah Yeshua fit into the Passover story? God gave us many signs and prophecies about our coming Messiah. Yeshua fulfilled all the prophecies foretold of the first coming of the Messiah in the Torah, the prophets and the writings. Just as the Lamb's blood protected the Israelites from death, Yeshua's blood will protect us from death. Even here, the matzah, and specifically the afikoman, are also considered the Passover sacrifice. Notice that the matzah is striped and pierced. Can you have me a matzah? Just a matzah. It's all right. I'm just doing it. All righty. Notice that the matzah is striped and pierced. Um, hmm. Likewise, Yeshua was striped by a whip and pierced by nails and a spear. And just as the Afikoman was broken, Yeshua was broken in payment for our rebelliousness. And just as the Afikoman was hidden away and brought back, Yeshua was hidden away in death in a grave and came back to life with much joy of all. Who's reading it? But you better Bethlehem Ibra. Um, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from, from of old, from ancient times. Now, make up me. Therefore, Israel will, I will, will be abundant until the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. Future, Micah 5, verse 4 to 5. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely for then his greatest greatness will reach the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted, just as there were many who were appealed, appalled. appalled at him. His appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form married, marred. marred beyond human likeness. So will, will he sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him, for what they were not told they will see and what they have not he heard. They will understand who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been, been revealed. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of the, the dry ground. He had no beauty of majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar 
with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces he was despised, and we esteem him not surely he took up our infirmities and carried out carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our trans transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearer shearers he is silent so he did not open his mouth by oppression and judgment he was taken away and who can speak of his descendants for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of me of my people he was stricken isaiah 52 verse 13 53 verse 8 oh how can i repay the lord for, for all his goodness to me, to me? I, will I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the lord I will, I will fill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Psalms 116, 12 to 14. Let us fill our cup for the third time this evening. Lifting the cup. Let's fill it. This is the cup of redemption, symbolizing the blood of the Passover lamb. It is the cup after supper, which Yeshua identified himself, which Jesus identified himself, saying, This cup is the new cup, new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Luke 22:20. 20. All Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. Everybody lean to the left for the redemption cup. The theme of this part of the Haggadah before the meal, uh, before the meal, was the redemption of the Israelites from Egypt. In keeping with Jewish tradition, we now move to the Messianic redemption. Jews now open the door, indicating their readiness to receive the prophet Elijah, who would herald the Messiah. Jesus told us that John the Baptist was this Elijahic herald. But now we look forward to the two prophets, of Revelation 11, who will come with the powers of Elijah and Moses to herald the second coming of the Messiah. Go step over there and pretend to open the door for us since we're not going to bother opening it right now. Thank you. Great. Come on back. Everyone together. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Malachi 4, 5. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire flows out of their mouth and devours their enemies. So if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this way. These have the power to shut up the sky, so that rain will not fall during the days of the prophesying. 
and they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every plague as often as they desire. Revelation 11, 3 through 6. Elijah was taken up by a great whirlwind in a chariot of fire, and Moses died and was buried by God. We wait for them today to announce the second coming of our Messiah, son of David. Before the, before the birth of John the baptizer, an angel of the Lord said, And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready, ready and people prepared for the Lord. Luke 1, 17. Later, Yeshua spoke of John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Matthew eleven fourteen. It was the same John who saw Yeshua and declared, Look, the Lamb of God who has takes away the sin of the, the world. John 1, 29. And Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and, the, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. Mark 8.31 And Peter reminds us of God's love for us and what is the surpass, surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. These are the accordance with the working of the strength of his might might which he brought about in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. Ephesians 1 verse 19 to 21. We are reminded by scripture that Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, at his last Passover, didn't drink this fourth cup, the cup of praise, hallelujah, celebration, the cup of completion, because it was not yet appropriate for the Messiah, who hadn't yet completed his mission of redeeming mankind from sin until after his death and resurrection. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the, of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Luke twenty-two seventeen to 18. But now that it is completed, it is appropriate for both Messiah Yeshua and us. Let us fill and drink our cups, the cup of praise, and give thanks. We need to fill it again. Let's have a drink of this one then. Hold still. There, I'll try. It'll spill less now. Great. Okay. The blessing at the bottom, right? Yes, all yes. Of us. Uh, blessed are you, you O Lord, Lord our God, God ruler, ruler of the universe, who created the fruit of the, the vine. vine. Lean to the left and drink the fourth cup of wine. Praise. Hallelujah. This text is from Psalms 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Everyone? His love endures, endures forever. forever. Give thanks to the Lord, thanks to God of gods. His, His love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His, His love, love endures, endures forever. forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His, His love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. Whose His love endures, endures forever. forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his, his love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Who made the great lights, his, his love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Who made the sun to govern the day, his, his love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Who made the moon and the stars to govern the night, 
His love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his ar army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the desert, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, his love endures forever. Who knows who the reader is now? The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand of to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after the time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their my mind 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 minds. minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach the, his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, "Now the Lord know the, know Lord. the Lord," because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Jeremiah 31 to 31, 34. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Revelation 4, verse 8. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Isaiah 6, 3. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiant was fading away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ it is taken away, even to this day when Moses is read. A veil covered their hearts, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness, with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Second Corinthians three, verse twelve to eighteen. At this point, we would typically sing or play the song, sing the song El Shaddai by Amy Grant, because we really like it for this point. It's a great opportunity to sing it as a group, uh, but we won't do it right now. We have now finished our Passover Seder. I encourage each one of you to take the time during the remaining Passover holiday to read the story of the Passover in Exodus, as well as the other scriptures quoted throughout this Haggadah. We are all called to live in the Shema, to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and might, and to treat others with kindness. Seek a relationship with God, not a ritual. There are many today that do not believe that Yeshua is the Son of God. To deny this is to deny the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. There is no mystery. Um, where am I? There's no mystery. It's, there is no mystery. It's all there. All the prophecies pertaining to the first coming of the Messiah have already been fulfilled by Yeshua. If you were to go back and read the prophecies, you would clearly see that it, uh, that it would be impossible for anyone else to fulfill these prophecies. So we can look into and study the prophets 
and study Yeshua's ministry and see the true fulfillment of God's word. You may ask, how can a Jewish person believe that Yeshua is the Son of God and still be Jewish? Well, the answer is simple to find. You must have a personal relationship with God. He will reveal the truth to you, and you will see that he is lifted, lifting the veil that has been placed over Jewish and Gentile hearts. All will see that the Jewish Messiah has come, and when Yeshua came, Jews were not called to give up their Jewishness. On the contrary, they were called to be more righteous than the Pharisees. The Gentiles, too, are having the veil lifted from their eyes, for they have denied their Jewish heritage for so long that there remains division in the church, and in some cases, a lack of understanding of the depth of scriptures. This is the ironic priestly blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord deal kindly and graciously with you. May the Lord bestow his favor upon you and grant you peace. That's found in Numbers 6, 24 to 26. And then we all say next year in Jerusalem together. Everybody together? Next, next year, year in, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem.